morning, Raymond M. Okay, so I did that. Good morning, Edwin Apia. Good morning, Enima Enimado. Good, 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 morning, good, Raymond, good morning, Good morning, Raymond. And then good morning, Daniel. And uh, good morning, Edwin. Okay, and yes. And good morning, Malik. Mm. And good morning, Malik, good since morning. we're doing that. So. Yes. <laughs> How are we doing this morning, though? Great morning, isn't We're it? We're good, and good morning to all the teachers in Ghana who have been ranked 32nd on the Global Teacher Status Index. I'm 32 out of 35, so we're not doing good at all. 32 out of 35? Yes, that's number 32 out of 35. Do you remember the OECD ranking where we were ranked? last out of yeah well this about to, over I mean, 80 china countries was, china was number one and and this survey what's really interesting is that there were 15 professions that were given to Ghanaians, and out of the 15s the most not respected profession was teaching that's sad wow yes and yet is one of the most important professions. but isn't that the heart of the problem when it comes to education in ghana mm. yep but you know yes. the teachers themselves don't like writing exams so <laughs> you know, I'm not surprised they are 32 out of 32. No, 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 no. But seriously, you, you go to places <laughs> like you go to places like, you know, and I'll always go back to the example of Finland, Finland where yeah. uh, the teachers earn as much as doctors. Yeah. And because of that, they are just as respected. Yes. Because yeah. their job is, I mean, it's teachers who teach doctors. What's that? Ex- what's mean, that expression? <laughs> all much. professions, all professions can boast, but the teacher taught them all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's but you know, that's so the thing. You know, it's, the it's most important concept. things in Ghana are done by people we don't respect. You know, if it comes to your car, you have a problem with your car, you give it to somebody who got a grade 36 BC. You understand? Even yeah. though you, you're a mechanical engineer yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, Daniel, you did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So we salute all teachers this morning. Yes, we value we your contribution. Because you have taught us to read, we can read the front pages yes, this we morning. Can, exactly. Indeed. Exactly. We, we definitely um, can. I was actually going to say something else. Today is also World um, Diabetes Day. Yeah, we'll actually be having a conversation with yes. the Sugar Projects this morning yeah. on the show. But anyway, let's thank our teachers by reading the Ghanaian Times front page. Yes, um, an impeccable English, um, in, in this case, dedicated to them. Expectations of the 2019 budget statement block tax loopholes to raise revenue for development. Economists and tax es- experts urge government. That's on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. Will not be pre- Pressured to sever ties with Qatar, that's according to President Akufuado. Kianiasti finally gets new governing council, university set to reopen on November 16th, and minority predict tough economic conditions for Ghanaians. Well, I'll try and read. Uh, impeccable, I'm not sure. Uh, the teachers got 32 out of 35, so they can't expect me to do better than Edwin. Edwin, please, I mean, be fair. I mean, Edwin, be we, fair. We have to take this thing very seriously. <laughs> no, I mean, we are taking it serious, but your teachers have done very well. I've read your articles. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have. They Go have. ahead. Yes. Salute to Prempe College teachers for teaching me English. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we well, on the front page of the Daily Graphic today, we have, of course, KNUST, KNUST reopens Friday. MPs to initiate bills. Government undertakes 3,020 projects towards poverty eradication. And there's also an inside story in which the Emir of Qatar is telling Akufado, you are governing Ghana well. At the back page, we have... One district, one factory secretariat approves 19 factories for the Brong Ahafo region. On the front page of the Chronicle, boat owners on strike as carpenters, kinky sellers take over premix trade. Adainimo fights Queen Mother over land and tension mounts at the Ghana Togo border. Military, police, and um, immigration service patrol frontier. Well, if we look at the new Crusading Guide newspaper, Paperless Port Success, GRE Nears. 13 billion revenue targets in the in, in November, you know, and the review of all cases presided over by bribe collecting judges. That is the youth against organized state organized fraud and justice. There's also a story about I will make education my top priority. King Kuju Ahuma the third. Okay, on the front page of the Daily Guide, there's that, there's that story about um, Nana Kufado's trip to Qatar. There's also the KNUSD story. And then there's $2 billion um, dollar Tema Port deal stinks. And NDC hawks on rampage attack Alabi Ashanti chairman and secretary. And this is um, ahead of the election on Saturday. Well, in the Herald newspaper today, Snit bosses cooking 5 million booty to share. NPP foot soldiers renew calls for AG's removal. Attorney General's witness in Opuni trial accused of lying. He was never head of Soil Science Division at Craig. 
And there's also the story about ministers fight Queen Star Opoku Sawyer over mobile ICT van for pupils. On the front page of the Daily Statesman, there's a really um, emotional story. Michelle Obama talks about um, her first daughter, Malia's prom night. It's, it's actually quite an interesting read. Ken USD, to be open on Monday, cash for cronies. We could lose $2 billion. DI calls for renegotiation of NDC ports contracts. And Africa should follow Ghana. That's also another story on Akufuado's visit to Qatar. Well, in the today's newspaper, which is about truth and enlightenment, we are enlightened on MPP dissent on Mahama over for propagating lies. There's also more trouble for NDC's Asiedu in Ketia. Inside the newspaper, we have Akoto Ampao backs Martin Amido, who is thinking about uh, uh, what happened to the U.S. Uh, Attorney General when he re resigned? Yeah, I yeah. know yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, from not me that he's going to resign, but he's just thinking about. You know, okay, yeah. all right, <laughs> Andrew. And finally, from me, and actually, finally for the headlines, governments. This is the Gold Street business. Government seeking critical mass of tax registrations. Five companies get new deadline for delisting from the Ghana Stock Exchange and internal audits under major reform. So Edwin, when is KNUST reopening again? Friday, Friday, Friday. If you if, if you're a KNUST student and you booked an appointment on Friday, you have a meeting with your girlfriend or something, please call it off. You are getting back to school on Friday. Call every meeting off. In that case, on Edwin's behalf, we apologize. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. So you, they are reopening on Friday. That is according to the registrar, A.K. Boating, in a statement released yesterday. Uh, it ends 21 days of the school being closed down after demo in the streets spilled into demo on the board in the boardroom. Uh, we we have um, five six new members on the governing council. They were sworn in yesterday by the minister of education uh, uh, Matthew Opoku Prempe, who has told the SRC to expect consequences for their actions. So four government appointees have been added. They are Nana Ej Bafo Iwa. Mr. Felix Kwano, Mrs. Hilda Hager Ampedu, Stephen Anoff, Amweni Yangsen, and Alaji Yakub Abubakar. There is also a representative from Chas in the National uh, 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 Council for Tertiary Education. You know, Otunfo said a lot of things on the day of uh, uh, the council was sworn in. He said that uh, he, he that incident on October 22nd is the worst in his 10-year tenure as chancellor and his vow to get to the bottom of it. There, here's a quote. I say, he says, this happened under my chancellorship. It's a pain I don't bear lightly. He also talks about five-member committee to investigate the disturbances and a judge is going to head that committee. KNUST is resuming, but hopefully it's resuming without hostilities. He says the school has opened, but the issues are not closed. He actually calls October 21st when they did the protest as the day of horrors. Strong words for an action movie, if you ask me. He wants us to review the role of the alumni, the vice chancellor, and the senior officers who uh, uh, played various roles in triggering the, the, the riots. He also talks about, he says that the reason why he didn't intervene earlier when he was petitioned is because the petitioners also sent the issue to court and he's saying that if you petition him first and then you go to court you cannot come around to be courting his intervention so it's you either go to two four first court second or you forget about his intervention later and uh, you know napo is saying that the src is going to pay for what has happened and so we expect you know in the days ahead what is about to happen we're not too sure but you know well let's just be happy that School is re 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 yeah. resuming. Yes. 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 Um, I'm. I'm particularly concerned about what's when that five-member committee that will be headed by a judge uh, will be constituted, so that the core concerns for the student, like you said, Edwin, will be addressed. But anyway, uh, let's uh, quickly take a look at uh, into the crystal ball, shall uh, yes, we? Yes. Um. So we know that the budget is going to be presented tomorrow. And Edwin, thank you for drawing my attention to this story. There's an opinion piece by um, Elizabeth Ohene, and I love the dry humor in this oh, piece. Because she really trust, just, <laughs> trust she, she really I goes mean, to I the mean. heart of the matter in a way that, you know, kind of just makes you smile and makes you think at the same time. So we know that in 2017, the budget was called the Sempa budget. And then in 2018, there was the Juma budget. Budget. Mm. And um, apparently this year's own is a hope budget. Then this is it's going to be a hell budget. I know, well, well yes, they said um <laughs> Ghana, Ghana, be, Ghana beyond hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's what that's what they're calling it. Um so yeah, so the hope budget 
hopefully, will be read tomorrow. And she starts off this piece by talking about how last year the um, opposition had placards with 419 um, written on it, yes. saying that it was a 419 budget. Mm. And then obviously Ken Ofriata responded and quoted Philippians 419, mm. um, which says in the Good News Version that, and with all his abundant wealth through Christ Jesus, my God will supply all your needs. Yes. Um, so that was that was a good Amen. one to start. That was a good one to start with. Um last year. She also goes back to quoting from an honorable member who um, used a term which I will not attempt to um, pronounce. It's in Latin but translates to what you do not have, you cannot give. And that speaks to the crux of the matter which is that the Ministry of Finance does not have money and therefore how can it give what it doesn't have? Especially when we know that over 98% of our revenue coming from tax is going in to pay the public sector workers and the civil service workers. And so therefore we're actually working with about 1.5% of tax that comes in. Mm. The question then is that how do you then um, distribute this 1.5% that is left? Yeah over everything that we need to do. So now we're talking about the roads, health, insurance, education. She makes a point that if you bring all your resources from um, tax revenue, the annual budget funding, internally generated funds, development partners, it would still not be enough if all we wanted to do was to fix the roads. Mm. Then she moves on to the fact that if you used all the money available, even just for the education ministry it still wouldn't be enough just to do that and then of course as possible what are the sanitation considering that only six percent of rural folk have access to um good sanitation so if you're going to take just that problem we still don't have enough money to do that then of course there's the special prosecutor and then of course she makes this point which really made me laugh and she says in light of all of this everybody wants taxes to be reduced and <laughs> abolished and reduce electricity tariffs reduce prices of petrol and other petroleum goods we want salary increases but we're not paying tax um and and it goes on in in that light however however she did give credit um to the last budget and i agree that you know you should give um, honor where honor is due. So she talks about the fact that salaries have gone up, even though it has co cost us a lot. Compensation has gone up. And also um, the fact that there was a creation of NAPCO and so the unemployment levels have been reduced um, a little bit. So we're looking forward to this budget that she calls the Akofafa budget. <laughs> Akofafa um, budget. Ako budget. And Interesting then, name there. Yeah, it is. And then she makes a point about the footbridges because we've been talking about this for the past few weeks. And she talks about the Kaneshi footbridges and how that has become a market. Mm. And a, a church exactly combined exactly. together, and, and so there's that. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there are other um, stakeholders that have put in the um, request. So there's a TUC, there's Guta, there's also cuts, and you know everybody's kind of pushing right. for what they need um, right. from the budget. So tomorrow, tomorrow, it's, it's yes, a, it's yes. But today we will be looking at how the budgets will be implemented because uh, one of the bodies that will take lead in implementing the budget will be the public and civil service. Let me help you how the budget will be implemented. According mm -hmm. to Elizabeth O'Hini, he says that I have lost interest when it became clear to me our budgets bear no resemblance to uh, reality. Reality. Yeah. That's why it's called yes. the hope budget. Uh, 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 okay. okay. That's why okay. it's called okay. the hope budget. Yes, 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 yes. But we need to find out how efficient or effective the public and civil services yes. before. Yes. Considering that they're taking over ninety-eight percent of the money that yes, comes Yes, like in. the Ghana Police Service. When service with them. integrity. Service, service with not integrity. Not service with slapping people. Uh, and when they say you slapped me, you no, say I You know what? Let's now <laughs> look at the, the poverty eradication programs government. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Party. Government is... Uh, uh, there's a poverty eradication program under the Ministry for Special Development, development initiatives. initiatives. If you open the... That's a one million one constituency. Yes, one million um, one constituency. Uh, Yes, ministry. Mrs. 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 Howard. Mavis Howard. Mrs. Mrs. Yeah, exactly. And he's, we are supposed to, he's undertaking 3,020 projects to eradicate poverty. He talks about the projects are in the northern region. For example, in the northern region, there are about um, 565. There are 335 in the Upper East, 251 in the Upper West, 217 in the Eastern region. There are others 219. In, I'm not mentioning uh, 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 election uh, uh, <laughs> votes. Don't, don't, I'm not mentioning votes. I'm mentioning projects. Okay. This is not like people who are going to vote and are mentioning the uh, okay. results. <laughs> this is not an election. I'm, I'm mentioning projects. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So we can find out. Maybe we can. We, can, we, we, should, we, we should go and. 291 in Ashanti region, 183 in the Bronga Hafo region. And there is 208 in the Greater Accra region. I don't know. Okay, I'll look for Greater Accra region, what we're doing. Yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. But you know, the Ministry for the Special Development Initiatives is so crucial to 
uh, uh, the government's implementation of its most ambitious promises. And so we, we need to take what they do seriously, especially exactly. when people have been complaining that they don't see what the government has been doing after two years. Exactly. Exactly. That's why we also, as journalists, need to go and look for these projects yes, and make yes. sure that they indeed exist and they are, 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 are going And, and the minister cleared um, the fact that a lot of, of us have thought that it was actually going to be money that's going to be given, given to, to these it's projects. So that it's, are actually, going to yeah, it's actually projects that are going to be So why was it called one million, one constituency? Because there's one it's million, one million dollars, dollars allocated to a constituency it, somehow, for development. Do they need some of these promises. They can be because well, you thought they would come to dash money. No, so 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 so, so, it, so the caption was one million one constituency, but it's really infrastructure for poverty eradication program. That's that was actually what was announced. So the one million has been right. given out. One million worth of. They are, that's it what is, they're doing. So the minister says it is being it's given out. Done. That's what's in the three, okay. three so thousand twenty project. So when you do the project. project, at least write on it one million one dollar constituency initiative, so that we can be sure. Because me, that, I, I that's good it. advice for for the minister. The one million. Um, anyway, let's go to uh, Qatar. Um, yes. So our president is saying that we will not be pressured to sever ties with Qatar. Now we know that Qatar has been a little bit controversial because um, there's apparently this alleged support for terrorists. Um, so we also know that some countries have actually disassociated um, with Qatar and some of the diplomats have been expelled from countries. So like Egypt and the United Arab Emirates. So our question here is that if we are going to keep ties with them and we're looking um, to them to help us with the modern railway network and um, with strong production center linkages. I think there was also five MOUs that were signed on yes. this visit um, of the president. And so we're asking, how will it affect our relationship with the countries that have severed ties with Yeah, Qatar? Yeah, great question. So first, there are four countries, really. There's Bahrain, there's Egypt, there's Saudi Arabia, and there's the UAE. And if you look at the UAE, for instance, we can't afford to lose them because according to their ambassador, as Khalifa Youssef Al-Zabi, at the end of 2016, trade between Ghana and the UAE was $2.4 billion. And currently, there are 60 companies from the UAE investing that amount, $2.4 billion, billion in Ghana now. Yeah. On the flip side, it doesn't look like we would lose the UAE because even with the United States of America, um, President Donald Trump initially offered support to the quartet. It's led by mm. Saudi Arabia. Mm. But most recently, um, the U.S. government has called on Saudi Arabia to find a way out of the dispute. So it looks like there's more pressure coming to bear on these four countries to resolve their differences with the UAE. So and those people who are saying the president is traveling too much, when he went to Qatar, to his credit, he came back with five MOUs. Five, five, one, two, three, four. And it was five just MOUs. a day. It was yes, just after one day, five MOUs. If he spent two days, ten MOUs. <laughs> okay, Edward. You should encourage him to travel more. <laughs> okay, Edward. Edward, let's finish off with um, let's call for MPs to initiate bills. Yes, shall MPs we? are going to initiate bills. That's according to the uh, uh, Speaker of Parliament. He wants to, you know, you know, he, you know, he's leading reforms in Parliament. He's saying that. Um, uh, they've set up a legal department to assist in drafting bills. They've actually interviewed lawyers, you know, so there are jobs at the parliamentary service if you want to join. He says Akufado supports his uh, 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 reform agenda to make it possible for MPs to initiate private members' bill, PMB, you know, private mail. Uh, isn't that already um, available? Because yeah. remember, Mahama Yarga wanted to initiate a private members' bill concerning the... After Abu Gapeli was jailed. Yes, but you know, you need to, you need to. The, you, okay, so the challenge with the private members bill is that it said that it's, it cannot uh, put any weights on the budget. Yes. So we cannot spend money. Yes. It, it cannot cost us any no. money. If it's going to have an implication on government economic policy. Exactly. No, uh, no, no. So that is where it has to change. Yes. Uh, no, what they want, to what they want, no, they, they will not even change that. What they want to focus on is allowing the private members to initiate bills in areas like social issues, like marriage child abuse, uh, child trafficking, you know, sexuality. And, you know, it was actually the private member's bill in Australia that allowed uh, the legalization of same-sex marriages in December 2017. So these are the kind of areas, you know, Matt, uh, the Speaker of Parliament has been very, very anti-LGBT. Uh, so yeah. maybe these are the kind of areas where you could have definite laws on, yeah. on, on them. But the problem is that most private member's bill don't go beyond, you know, constitution state. They hardly get passed, even mm. in countries where they, it is practiced. If you go to uh, 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 countries like Australia, the, the, the uh, New Zealand, for example, in Canada, mm. for example, it's been successful. 229 bills in, ni one, in 99 years. But in other countries, about a century, you just passed about 12. Interesting. So yes. it may not make much of a difference, but yes. let's see what the Ghana example um, holds. We'll uh, let's go online now. The online re news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest in Goyal Good Energy. And download the Save Doctor app now from Google Play. Save Doctor, the future of better medical care. 
Now, from now till January 2019, anytime you buy Goil Fuel, 80 CDs and above, collect a scratch card, dial star 161, star 4645 hash, and follow the steps. You'll receive an instant message for your reward. Then, all you get rewards like free fuel, airtime, lunch for two, driver's vest, and many, many more. Uh, also, when you buy fuel, you accrue points, and the one with the highest points receives gifts at the end of every month. Uh, the first 800 uh, points, I mean. Uh, you can receive a Goil Go card loaded with up to 1,000 Ghana CDs fuel, free lubricants, and a lot more. Um, Goil Good Energy, Goil general yet they are joined the fear any fear promo now your bank of choice zenith bank is the best customer service bank in ghana our ability to serve you with the very best of products and services in the banking industry has earned us the excellence in customer service awards in the 2018 ghana business awards we've also won several notable customer service awards both locally and internationally so go on make that move today and achieve your aspirations with zenith bank because we care zenith bank in your best interest. Good morning to you, Nicholas Coffee, listening to us in Love 99.5 FM in Kumasi. Good morning to our friends on Radio Max 105.1 FM in Takwali as well. MajorOnline.com says Dagbon protests. New region will not affect traditional boundaries. Dan Boche is speaking there. KNUST teacher unions restore suspended services in that story that Edwin brought earlier. Defunct UT Bank chases Woyome for 9.4 million Ghana cities debt. So they are not really chasing Woyome, are they? They are chasing... Um, the Attorney General is disputing uh, the defunct UT Bank. What is okay? Other online stories. CNN says 10 students die in suspected arson at Ugandan boarding school. Terrible news there. And BBC says Melania calls for national security aid. Mira Ricardell's firing. If you want to know more about that, hop on to BBC.com. So we're going to take these important messages and the BBC News at 7 comes off. Thanks anymore. Thanks, Edwin. Yeah, I was going to do my FNF personal promo. Uh, happy birthday to my sister. Belated, uh, it is, uh, November 11th. Yeah, she celebrated her birthday. So happy, happy, happy birthday, Jemima. Appear of the local government ministry. Happy birthday, Jemima. Yes, yes. okay. From all of us. Mm. And Bishop uh, Nitaki Aboy, a uh, presiding... Um, well, the head of the Victory Bible Church International. Mm. Happy birthday Happy to me. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's the kind of birthday party I would like to attend. I know. Good, right? Bishop, your boy. Know, right? Victory um, Bible Church birthday party. It's going to be a victorious birthday party. Okay, we're going to take the BBC News at 7 now.